What's up, Dark Horses? I'm Shane Farmer, this is Dark Horse Drawing, and today we're talking about why your legs aren't working on the machine and what you can do to fix that. You might be wondering why one of your legs is working more than another inside of your workout, or perhaps you're just not feeling your legs at all. And the answer is both simple and complex. The reason being, our bodies are not symmetrical despite what we may think of as the body being perfectly symmetrical in nature. Before we get to the, the answer to that though, know that there are a couple ways that we can actually work on this asymmetry to try and bring it back to a point of balance. Now it may not be absolutely perfect, but it's a really great way to start training to offset what may be deficiencies in your body that you may not even know exist because they're fairly minute, but when seen over a long period of time can create deficiencies in our training or in our body that we're compensating for. The objective is to work complementary systems to what we are doing in our normal training, which usually constitutes bilateral training, meaning both sides of my body are working in the same Function. In this instance, we're going to use unilateral training, meaning one side of my body, to work and train to offset what can be a compensatory mechanism in my body. For example, I have a left shoulder that doesn't like to activate very well. I struggle to get my scap to really lock the shoulder in place. It's still strong, but I know that this left shoulder is inherently weaker than my right. My right locks in really well, and I can tell that because when I have to sprint on the machine, my left elbow breaks to compensate and grab tension while my right arm can actually hang like it's supposed to. So my left arm burns out faster than my right if I'm doing sprint work. This tells me that I need to work on the left side and activating to help compensate and try to bring my left shoulder back into alignment with what's happening on the right side of my body. Back to the question of why the body isn't symmetrical. Well, originally it was. When you were born, you were pretty darn symmetrical. Your body was fluid and you hadn't developed any kind of bad habits yet. And in fact, you were developing into your adult body as children that our mechanics and our bone lengths and sizes and ratios are actually different from those of an adult. As you grew, you started to establish different movement patterns that were unique to you. Now, these may have changed or been influenced by potential injuries, how much time you spent sitting, if you were a climber, if you were a runner, a swimmer, all of the activities that just became part of who you are influenced the way that your body developed and therefore you started to develop biases towards certain types of movement which may have caused the body to start to compensate one way or another because it was expecting that it needed to perform in that manner for that reason. Now that also happens if we have some major injury. Now for a period of time, that location on the body shuts down or becomes dormant because it's injured. And for example, if you blow an Achilles, you'll notice that somebody's calf on the side where the Achilles was blown or torn is much smaller in size than the calf on their leg that didn't tear. This is because it atrophies, the muscle atrophies because it's not being used. So if that happens, you have to understand the body will then start to build up a compensatory mechanism that allows you to continue your activities of daily living without perhaps that particular muscle doing its job that it used to do. And this creates a whole downstream effect that ripples throughout your body because the body is intimately connected and so it creates different ways that certain things shut off, certain things work harder, and you may not even notice that that's happening. You see, the body is really, really good at making sure that you continue to operate and have a life to live. And therefore, it is trying to find the shortest, most direct route to getting you back on the road. It's, if, it's like if you blow a tire in a race, that pit crew comes in and tries to change that tire as fast as possible to get you out and going. The body does the same thing. If something goes wrong, the body's gonna find a way to reroute, reorganize, and make sure that you can continue doing the things that you're used to doing. Albeit this time, it may be a little less efficient. All of that to say, 
If we haven't unwound it, it's normal that we would expect that the body begins to develop one pattern over another. And it's also normal to expect that you may have never noticed that this was happening and that's not your fault. It's just your body's way of doing things. It's automatic. It's not that you're consciously thinking about adapting. You just adapt and change. Therefore, if we can focus on unwinding that or developing other ways of re-strengthening or re-bringing back a movement pattern, we can be on a road to better strength, better performance, and happier workouts. Now, back to what we can do about it and why we're focusing specifically on the legs. Here are two simple drills that you can implement to start strengthening your legs, giving you more connection, more power, and better feeling on the machine that's going to reduce your compensating leg that may be stronger than a weaker leg. And you're also gonna find that one of the drills uses our upper body and that because the body is so intimately connected, by approaching our upper body, we're actually going to have an impact on the way that our lower body performs. Number one is the single leg row. And that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I really need to go much into how this is gonna operate. You'll only row with one leg. The other foot can be sitting on the floor, it can be on a furniture slider, it can be on a skateboard. I've seen a lot, just a piece of cardboard works pretty well too. I've seen a lot of different formats that make this drill work. But the point being, we remove one leg to allow you to focus on a single leg at a time and understand how one leg may be working a lot more than the other and then to give training to the leg that isn't working as well. As an aside, a huge benefit to this drill is in the world of injury recovery. You'd be amazed how many people have blown Achilles, ankle surgery, knee surgery, tweak a knee, tweak a break a foot, all these things that allow your leg to not be able to work the same way that it did before. This drill is fantastic for leg injury rehab. Now for this drill, things that we want to be thinking about. Number one, this leg, as I mentioned, I'm not going to use any accoutrement today. We could have a piece of cardboard under my foot, a furniture slider, a skateboard, but really you don't need that because once the leg comes off the foot stretcher, if you just put it on the floor, you're not gonna get any drive power out of that leg anyways. So one leg off the machine. Next leg gets tied in. And I like to think about placing the foot about where this foot stretcher is so that my legs are generally in alignment. You're then gonna pick up your handle, lock into your catch, and you're gonna take strokes. The things I want you to think about as you are doing this is number one, make sure that you are staying in parallel to the handle, shoulders being parallel to the handle. You will ideally be perpendicular to that chain. So as you're taking a stroke, you wanna make sure that that handle isn't shifting one way or another, and also at the back side that you're not dumping one way or another, leaning back to the left or the right. From there, lock in with that foot. Don't do anything that you wouldn't normally do during your stroke. You're just going to take comfortable strokes, and let's just show you how this thing looks when you're operating. Now, things that I notice immediately that start to happen as I'm doing this drill. One, my glute and my back on this left side are starting to work really hard. I notice it, I'm cognizant of it, and it's going to help tell you, especially after I do the other leg, which side fatigues faster. The other thing I'm noticing, and this is really important, is that my midline is getting worked almost immediately because I'm having to use what is what we call anti-rotation. The body is needing to resist the desire to rotate away from or into the tension that I have on the handle. We want that. We want that midline strength and stability so that when we bring both legs back together, we are stronger for this drill. The second drill is the single arm row. Again, pretty self-explanatory. There's the cheap way, and then there's the still cheap, you just have to do a little bit of extra work on it way. The cheap way is that you just use the handle as is, except you're gonna grab it in the center of the handle. And the still cheap way, but you have to do a little bit of extra work, is that you're going to purchase a replacement handle for a shovel, drill two holes in the bottom of it, replace the handle on the machine, and push the U-bolt through the other handle that you're getting, the replacement shovel handle, 
and you're gonna hold on to that, which is actually a pretty decent way of doing things. It's just gonna take you 15 bucks and a little bit of elbow grease. But I digress. The reason that we are doing this is because there is this wonderful cross line that goes from the shoulders across your trunk and then connects to, so if I'm gonna say my right shoulder, it crosses at my trunk, this is a fascial line, connects from my shoulder, my right shoulder, to my left hip and down the left leg. So if I want to work on balancing, especially this rotational component, as well as how my legs and my body are interacting on the machine, I should be spending some time rowing with both legs connected, but only holding on with one hand to help me isolate what's going wrong, especially on this back line of my body. And next, the single arm drill. This is gonna operate very similarly to the single leg. The thing, as I mentioned, is that we are going to use the cheap and inexpensive version, which is that I'm going to do nothing <laughs> other than just holding the handle with my fingers through the slots here. Now this is not the most comfortable grip. You're not gonna love it. It's not gonna feel good on your fingers. So if you wanna put some foam in there or towels to cushion that, you can. If you're going to be doing any kind of higher volume, I would suggest that you go the route of buying that replacement shovel handle, drilling two holes in it, and replacing this handle with the shovel handle. You'll probably be a lot happier and it's going to create a more natural grip that you would use with a single arm. So for example, if you have a shoulder surgery or so shoulder injury and you can't use one arm, but you still wanna row, that handle's a really great tool that you would wanna use for the period of time for which you can't use a single arm. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna strap in. I'll then grab my, handles, my handle and all the same principles apply here except this time it's going to be a lot more likely that my body rotates into the handle as I drive. So I really have to think about driving that shoulder of the arm that's connected back and into place and not letting myself get tugged forward. Other than that, the drill's going to operate the same, so let's take a look at how this goes. Again, as I mentioned, not incredibly comfortable on the hand, but the thing that I am noticing is that I'm getting very similar stimulus to what happened with the single leg drill and that my midline fires up instantly. But the other piece is that I really notice whether or not my trap starts to overtake tension or if I'm using my lat to engage or if that elbow is locked out. All those things are gonna come forward very fast to you. So pay attention, make sure you implement this over time and that you are then going to your other hand and using both arms, paying attention to the difference between the two. That's it. Take those two drills, start implementing them, and what you'll find is that you're gonna start exposing these little weak points that you may not have noticed before, and it may get very frustrating at first because you're realizing that this part of your body may not have been working for you the way that you thought it was, and it's actually an energy leak point for you. The goal as you implement this over time and practice these drills, rowing single leg or rowing single arm, is that you're going to shore up those little weak points, turn on more supporting musculature in that area, which is going to start building a more balanced and well-rounded system, being your body, as you move. All of that means you're gonna get better, happier, faster workouts with less energy that's going to relay into the rest of your life giving you the ability to feel better in everything else that you do. Remember, the goal here is to just build percentage point by percentage point, slowly rebuilding the system to help give you a little bit more gravity behind your stroke so that you can be more connected and it has to be done over time. It's not gonna happen overnight. You're not gonna have one miraculous session where things change. You're going to chip away, chip away, chip away until six months from now, you're stronger than you were, and you may not have even noticed it over time because it was so subtle, and yet your performances are going to show otherwise. So to you, my dark horses out there, thank you for tuning in. You guys know this is your community. This is where dark horses come to hang out, to communicate, to learn from one another, to improve your own life, and to push on because you know that you are the only one responsible for taking your life where you wanna do it. Process over outcome. Work on the process every single day, and you will end up in the right place at the right time with the right people. Guys, I love you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, it's been a pleasure. If you love this and you wanna be a part of the Dark Horse community because you belong to, and you wanna be around a type of people that 
believe in the same thing that you do and feel like there is more love and knowledge to give to the rest of the world, we're here for you. If that's you, hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that you get alerted whenever we come out with a new video. Guys, and as always, I appreciate you hanging out. We will see you on the other side. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed this and you're looking for more and you want workouts, continuous coaching from me and my other coaches in our private Facebook community. It's our monthly workout program. It's $39 a month. Just go over to darkhorserowing.com slash athlete to sign up now.